He was targeted by the Obama administration, and he was targeted in order to try and take down a president. And what they've done is a disgrace, and I hope a big price is going to be paid. A big price should be paid. There's never been anything like this in the history of our country. What they did, what the Obama administration did, is uh, unprecedented. It's never happened. Never happened. A thing like this has never happened before in the history of our country. And I hope a lot of people are going to pay a big price, because they're dishonest, crooked people. They're scum, and I say it a lot. They're scum. They're human scum. This should never have happened in this country. And it's a disgrace. The Obama administration, Justice Department, was a disgrace. And they got caught. They got caught. Very dishonest people. But much more than dishonest. It's treason. It's treason. But for these people to have done that, I am very proud of General Flynn. I can tell you that right now. Who would you like to see pay a price for this? Oh, the people should pay a big price for what they've done to this country. They should pay a big price. And uh, their partner, very complicit, is a thing called the media. The media is totally guilty. And all of those writers and so-called journalists, they're not journalists, they're thieves. All of those journalists that received a Pulitzer Prize should be forced to give those Pulitzer Prizes back. Pulitzer Prizes should all be returned because, you know what? They were given out falsely. It was fake news. They're all fake news. Those Pulitzer Prizes should be given back immediately. And the Pulitzer Committee or whoever gives the prizes, uh, they're a disgrace unless they take those prizes back. Because they got Pulitzer Prizes for what turned out to be false stories. And Pulitzer Prizes should be given to the ones that got it right. And I could give you a long list of those names, too. And you know who I'm talking about. And, and remember this, the Russia hoax made it very hard for Russia and the United States to deal with each other. They're a very important nation. We're the most powerful nation. They're a very powerful nation. Why would we not be dealing with each other? But the Russia hoax, this absolute dishonest hoax, made it very difficult for our nation and their nation to deal. And we discussed that. I said, you know, it's a very appropriate time because things are falling out now and coming in line, showing what a hoax this whole investigation was. It was a total disgrace. And I wouldn't be surprised if you see a lot of things happen over the next number of weeks. This is just one piece of a very uh, dishonest puzzle. We are talking about arms control with Russia. And we will go forward with that. And we are talking about it very seriously, having arms control. They have many nuclear weapons, and so do we. And we're talking about a uh, arms control with Russia. Yeah, they'd like to do it. We'd like to do it. The idea that they were able to do this to General Flynn, the idea that this happened to this administration over this time, is appalling. I'm happy for General Flynn, but we're not done. This is the beginning, from top to bottom. We need to find out who knew, what happened, and what we're going to do about it. And James Comey's been out there making millions Here's of dollars. We now need to say, look, you literally ran this poor general in the ground. You need to be held accountable. President Trump on the dismissal of General Flynn's case. The dismissal follows the recent release of exculpatory evidence revealing how the Obama administration era FBI conspired to set up and then frame General Flynn, discussing even how to get him to lie so he could be fired or prosecuted. Those documents also showed the FBI had found, quote, no derogatory evidence against General Flynn and recommended closing down the case and, in fact, were sent to close the case, codenamed Crossfire Razor, 16 days before President Trump was to take office. The DOJ's actions also coming less than 24 hours after the release of a less redacted memo from August 2017 that former Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein used to expand Robert Mueller's Russian investigation far beyond its initial scope. Rosenstein's memo authorizing Mueller to look into criminal allegations that did not exist against Carter Page, Paul Manafort, George Papadopoulos, Michael Flynn, and a still unidentified fifth person 
Senate Judiciary Committee Chairman Lindsey Graham finally getting his head on straight. He drew this conclusion. But there was no legitimate reason to believe any of these four were working with the Russians on August the 2nd, 2017. Therefore, the entire Mueller investigation was illegitimate to begin with. That's very important. Well, God bless America and God bless General Flynn. Uh, this is a vindication for General Flynn. It's a vindication uh, for folks like you, Lou, and Judicial Watch, who've been highlighting the incipient corruption behind the targeting of Flynn and President Trump through Mueller and everything else. Uh, this, this is a startling document that was filed today. It reads like an indictment of James Comey. And we have to remember, this goes back to Barack Obama. Sally Yates admits that Obama discussed Flynn specifically, and the implication was going after him on the Logan Act, which was the uh, fake crime they used to try to impeach him or uh, uh, corner him on perjury. Uh, the Justice Department disavowed all of that today. And uh, it shows you, frankly, though, the Justice Department and the FBI had this information for years, yet they continued to pursue and harass General Flynn. And uh, th there's, th there's something deeply rotten in the infrastructure of the FBI and Justice Department. And it's exposed today. And as you're highlighting, and Senator Lindsey Graham finally highlights, because we called on Mueller to be fired from the get-go because we knew it was corrupt what he was doing. Right. The whole Mueller investigation is corrupted. He, when Barr came in, he should have audited Mueller immediately. What else? I, I, you can presume everyone that Mueller touched was corruptly uh, pursued. Everyone should be pardoned. Witnesses, targets, everyone. Mm -hmm. That's an interesting point because uh, obviously the FBI was corrupt from the inception. Uh, preceding the special counsel investigation as well. It is, uh, it is a stunning document, as you say, and it is also gratifying that the Attorney General, William Barr, appointed a man, uh, U.S. Attorney Jensen, who moved this uh, to a decision in a matter of months instead of what we have become used to, a painful, prolonged uh, procrastination. Uh, this was, uh, I, I think, uh, a timely uh, exercise of a power to stop an abuse of power. Yeah, and I, General Flynn deserves tens of millions of dollars from the federal government for what they put him through. The FBI agents who went after Flynn, the, the special counsel, <laughs> the Justice Department attorneys, this is ignorance and evil, and it is obviously rampant. Uh, within the Obama uh, era, Justice Department and FBI. Yeah, Lou, I mean, I've been in government long enough to know this is not some mid-level bureaucrats who are conducting this. This was a cabal of people at the highest levels of the Justice Department, the FBI, the intelligence community, who knows, maybe even into the Obama White House. And it was a concerted effort to reverse the will of the people who had just elected by a landslide surprise victory a person who wanted to come in and clean out Washington to, to reverse course in policy, but also in practice. And they should all be held. It's not just about exonerating Michael Flynn and all the rest of us who were pulled into that trap. It's about going after the people who are responsible. I'd like to know what did Comey know and when did he know it and then move up the food chain. Uh, first of all, Cindy, congratulations to you and to General Flynn. Uh, your uh, reaction today upon learning of the Department of Justice decision. Oh, thank you so much, Lou. We are both obviously relieved and gratified that we have an attorney general and other attorneys in the Department of Justice now with enough integrity to bring the truth to light and agents who were willing to help dig for it until they fi found it and then expose it so the public can see it. The government made a significant filing today. I haven't even had a chance to read all of it yet. There are a number of additional exhibits attached to it. Mr. Schiff wouldn't know the truth if it poked him in one of his bug eyes because General Flynn's plea was neither knowing nor voluntary, and both those things are required for a guilty plea in the United States of America. This is the restoration of the rule of law and a huge step in the right direction toward getting rid of the people who have deliberately sought to subvert a lawful election and the will of the American people writ large and this president's presidency. 
And I want to give you credit in your defense of General Flynn because uh, you are also among those who produced, uh, as a result of your efforts, produced documents that uh, led to Adam Schiff being uh, absolutely revealed for what uh, he was clearly, uh, but not necessarily uh, evidentially uh, uh, proved. Uh, he as an evil uh, and absolutely ignorant partisan uh, force within the Democratic Party. Uh, it, it is beyond, uh, it, to me it's beyond cons uh, imagination that he still is running uh, off at the mouth talking as he did today uh, in reaction after being uh, held up and, and demonstrated to be a lawyer uh, and a liar uh, for the past two years. It, it's just amazing. He is obviously an extremely uh, disturbed and deceitful person. We sought the truth from the very beginning of my appearance in General Flynn's case. That is what we are getting. I'm sure there's still more right. to be revealed, but we have made a huge step in the right direction thanks to the real lawyers and agents in the Department of Justice who seek truth and not convictions. Well, it is, it's gratifying to hear you uh, compliment the, uh, the energy and the uh, acts of FBI agents who were instrumental in uh, producing uh, this material and the attorneys of the Justice Department under uh, William Barr. And, uh, and again, U.S. Attorney Jensen uh, kept making a, a, a timely decision. Uh, he only uh, took up the role of uh, scrutinizing uh, that uh, case in February. So by uh, by legal standards of late, uh, it's, he was working at warp speed. Uh, and you, as uh, throughout Sydney, have been uh, absolutely terrific. And we compliment you for all you've done for General Flynn, uh, for the, uh, the presidency of uh, Donald Trump and the country. Thanks so much. Sidney Powell, congratulations. Now, what do you think we are looking toward? Uh, mean, we're watching a review of all of this, uh, the, the bar investigation, if you will, of the investigators, Durham's investigation. Uh, the president is finding vindication in this process and watching, sure. uh, and I want to ask you both again about Adam Schiff. Uh, Tom, let me begin with you. Uh, this, this man is out of control. Uh, he is vicious. He is venal. Uh, he is outright evil personified. Well, in my view, the Justice Department should have been investigating him for some time, uh, especially his communications with the uh, alleged whistleblower, which may have involved the dissemination illegally of classified information. Uh, Schiff has uh, major ethical issues. If I were the president of the United States, and I've been calling on this to happen for some time, I'd cut him off from access to classified information. There's no law requiring he be given access to classified information. He can't be trusted to uh, handle it. And so he should, he should be denied that privilege. How closely do you believe, KT, that Democrats, the radical Dems like Adam Schiff and mm -hmm. uh, various others, we're working with the the deep state and the Obama era Justice Department and FBI. Well, I think they were working hand in glove, and and I would add to that that the partisan press um, that that leans towards Obama. I think they were all passing things back and forth. I know from my own experience that things I was saying to in the Mueller investigation were finding their way to the committees on Capitol Hill were finding their way into the New York Times, always edited, twisted, spun, not what I had said as the way I had said it, but with their own spin and their own interpretation. So I think they were, all three were working together and, and doing the bidding, frankly, of Russian disinformation. This was a Russian disinformation, and the Justice Department knew it from the first day. And when and it's Trump Tower on January 6th, when President-elect Trump met with the, the heads of the intelligence agencies and they tried to, and Comey tried to shake him down. From that point on, the intelligence community, they knew the Steele dossier was a fake, and yet they went through everything, including the Mueller investigation, and what they knew was a scam and a sham. 
And Tom, it's also obvious that uh, that as these documents have been revealed as a result of General Flynn's defense, as a result also of the release, uh, the pending release of documents from uh, from the uh, Intelligence Committee, the transcripts of 53 witnesses, and there's not an ounce an ounce of indication, let alone evidence, of anything remotely approaching collusion. Well, as as uh, Struck and Page, there were the infamous text messages. They were that there was no there there, and when Rod Rosenstein, after the fact, blessed Mueller's investigation, uh, he was blessing an investigation based on what they all knew to be a fraudulent dossier. Look, it's one thing to have d Russia disinformation, but you then had the FBI continuing to work with the, uh, well, assuming it was Russia disinformation, you had the FBI and Justice Department continuing to work with. They were seeking out. Uh, uh, Steele still has a source, despite having evidence, he was a front for the Russians. In the end, I don't think the Russians were behind this disinformation. I think it was an inside job. The evidence is it was all the Clinton operation, FBI, Western Intel, pretending it was Russia Intel, and they were all deciding to uh, begin the sedition right. against the incoming president. Remember, the attack, the, the, the targeting of Flynn was about Flynn, but was also about the coup against President Trump. Flynn, mm -hmm. KT, others, oh, they were all, vehicles all to about. destroy the presidency. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was all about exactly yeah. that, as uh, we have discussed uh, was, for some time, yes. the attempted overthrow of the president of the United States. KT, Tom, we thank you both for being here. We appreciate your insight uh, and sharing uh, your perspectives with us here tonight. Your reaction first to the, to the motion to dismiss charges against General Flynn. It's great to see honor restored to General Flynn's good name. The media didn't have any honor to begin with, and the only way to bring it back to the Department of Justice is to see these prosecutions through to ensure that the people who engaged in this activity are never able to frame someone like they framed General Flynn ever again. The boomerang has really come back on a lot of these House Democrats. Adam Schiff and Nancy Pelosi have egg on their face. You and I have been telling people, Lou, for three years that this wasn't a crime. It was a cover-up for the fact that Democrats were actually colluding with Russians through Christopher Steele, his subsources, and the fact that his subsources were the targets of Russian intelligence. Everything we've said has been true, proven true, and Adam Schiff is now a man who was caught in a lie and then used an impeachment over Ukraine to cover up that lie. And still lying. Uh, saying today, as a, in response to the motion to dismiss, that General Flynn still was lying uh, as a result of the investigation by the uh, FBI and the Justice Department, uh, which is patently untrue. Uh, it, the yep. lying uh, was James Comey and uh, all of those uh, at the top of the Obama era Department of, uh, of Justice and the FBI agency itself. Uh, your, your thoughts about Adam Schiff? You, you know him very well. Uh, look, you know, history will not be kind to what these folks did to our country, to our president. And if you really think about it, it demonstrates how the House of Cards has come falling down. We would always show the bias, the evidence of mistreatment. And then the Democrats would say, yeah, well, Flynn pled guilty. Now you see that was all based on this phony setup done by the FBI. But here's the, I think, a bigger issue, Lou. If you zoom out from Michael Flynn, you see a common trend. Folks were trying to set up the people who might be close to the president, whether that was Michael Flynn, George Papadopoulos, Roger Stone, Donald Trump Jr., you know, Corey Lewandowski, any of these folks that got wrapped into having to respond to the Mueller investigation uh, were largely there to try to create leverage against the president. The only reason we know that to be the case for certain with Flynn is because someone actually wrote it down. But it's not as if Comey and that whole cabal tried to fl frame Flynn and then didn't try it against anyone else. Mm -hmm. It's precisely why they tried it in these other cases. The only person that they really got the leverage against was Michael Cohen, because he had some dirty business with the taxi cab medallions that he couldn't really answer for. But for the most part, everyone else told the truth. They didn't fall for the traps. And now we're really starting mm -hmm. to see uh, who the real criminals are. And I think these prosecutions that are upcoming will further illuminate that. 
Well, as I said earlier on, on the broadcast, it is nice to see a U.S. attorney, Jensen, who made the decision to move the motion to dismiss against the general. Uh, it, it, I, this is the beginning of what appears to be uh, William Barr's reform of the U.S. Justice Department. It is uh, great to see your reaction. Uh, I am very heartened by the determination that the attorney general has shown. But I still think that at the end of the day, Lou, this can't all end with a series of reports that say, well, people broke the law, but they're not really going to jail. That does not do it. That is not a sufficient antidote to the virus that was uh, down on the Department of Justice, you know, during the beginning of the Trump presidency and during the Trump transition. And so I think that to, to fully eradicate that, we're actually going to need to see criminal process brought against the people who were directing these illegal acts. And, James Comey has essentially admitted to it. He said that he took advantage of the fact that it was a new government in transition and got away with something he never would have gotten away with otherwise, and that was the framing of Michael Flynn. But Flynn wasn't the only one. They tried it over and over again, and I don't think a single person should spend a day in jail as a consequence of the Mueller investigation because it was built on a rotten foundation. He, Mueller really should have been investigating those subsources of the right. Steele dossier and figuring out their collusion with the Democrats and the DNC and Glenn Simpson and the okay. Perkins Law Firm. It was a stunning move. The Department of Justice, after revealing new evidence that Michael Flynn's attorney said was proof the FBI was out to get him, today dropped the case against Flynn. It even took President Trump by surprise. I didn't know that was uh, happening at this moment. Uh, I felt it was going to happen just by watching and seeing like everybody else does. Uh, he was an innocent man. If approved by the presiding judge, the move would vacate Flynn's guilty plea, a plea he had been seeking to withdraw. He was targeted by the Obama administration, and he was targeted in order to try and take down a president. And what they've done is a disgrace, and I hope a big price is going to be paid. Flynn had been a target of the Mueller investigation. In a newly released scope memo, Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein sent to Mueller on August 2nd, 2017, Rosenstein told Mueller to look into Flynn's contacts with Russian officials during the transition and whether he lied to the FBI. Mueller was also told to look into Carter Page, Paul Manafort, and George Papadopoulos to determine whether any of them colluded with Russia in the 2016 election. Senator Lindsey Graham, who requested the scope memo, says Mueller's appointment had no legal justification because it was based on a disavowed dossier on the Trump campaign and that Flynn had been cleared by the FBI before agents, including Peter Strzok, insisted on interviewing him. The legal foundation for Mueller's appointment is crumbling. So now we know that the scope of the investigation was to look at Carter Page, Flynn, Papadopoulos, and Manafort as to whether or not they were working with the Russians. President Trump has long insisted that Michael Flynn has been treated extremely unfairly, and this may not be the last shoe to drop in this as well. We're still waiting for the Durham investigation into the Mueller probe. And Roger Stone, what will happen to him? Like Flynn, President Trump believes Stone has been treated unfairly and may be up for a presidential pardon. Your reaction to the DOJ dropping that case? Should have happened uh, weeks ago, maybe even months ago. It's outrageous the way he's been treated. Uh, you, you spoke about his being an outstanding general. Uh, and, uh, and a lot of this looks like it just happened because Trump was president. Actually, I think there were people in the previous administration after him because he knew what was going on inside the intelligence community. And if he got to be national security advisor for President Trump, uh, he'd know where the bodies are buried and he would make big changes. And I think that they saw that as a real threat. And things, uh, things that have been happening, uh, you ought to have those threats happen. Hanging out there, but uh, I, one thing that I, if I could uh, just make one point before you ask me again, uh, uh, a lot of people are telling me there should be prosecution because of this, and maybe there should be people prosecuted. But the most important thing about this is that this uh, um, a person's been given justice, 
in, a, in addition to his justice, the fact that, that we're getting all this information out that was previously held secret, so this doesn't happen to some innocent person in the future, any American, if it can happen to a general, just think what can happen to the average citizen. So uh, the exposure of this act, uh, activity at the top of the FBI, and even with collusion within the Justice Department, uh, it's a good thing it's being exposed. The whole thing was a setup from the first moment. Now, we know this for certain. We're not speculating because we have Peter Strzok's text messages to his creepy government lawyer girlfriend, Lisa Page. But what if we didn't have those text messages? We almost didn't. At first, you recall, the FBI claimed they'd been lost due to some technical glitch. So we almost didn't find out what really happened in this case. Michael Flynn almost went to prison. And that gets to the nub of all of this, the most important question of all. How often does the FBI set people up? How many other lives have they destroyed without the public knowing about it? In other words, this isn't about Michael Flynn, it's about you. Mike Flynn was set up by corrupt law enforcement officials. They suggested their goal was to, quote, get him to lie so we can prosecute him or get him fired. That's not speculation. The FBI wrote that down on paper. Flynn faced a maximum of five years in prison. Naturally, Schiff himself weighed in today, too. He couldn't help himself. Quote, Flynn pled guilty to lying to the FBI about his illicit Russian contacts. His lies do not now become truths. This dismissal does not exonerate him. Wait, what? Is Adam Schiff, the chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, now claiming that a call between the incoming national security advisor and the Russian ambassador to the United States is, quote, an illicit Russian contact? He is claiming that. This is insanity, and it's calculated insanity. And in the end, hate to tell you, it may work. It is entirely possible your grandchildren will be reading Adam Schiff's version of history 20 years from now. That's why they're saying it. That's the goal. In the meantime, you should consider what it would mean if unscrupulous liars like these were ever to take full control of this country. They know Michael Flynn is not a dangerous criminal. If he was a dangerous criminal, they'd be working to free him from jail. No. They wanted Flynn crushed purely because he happened to be in the way of the power they seek. And that's why they're still trying to put Roger Stone behind bars, because he mocked them to their faces and that diminished their authority. Roger Stone may still go to prison, by the way. We'll keep you posted. But the question is, how many other inconvenient Americans would they bankrupt and imprison if they could? Let's hope we never find out. What the federal government did to Mike Flynn was demonstrably and provably unfair. And anyone who refuses to admit that in the face of overwhelming evidence should not wield power. The case is overwhelming, Tucker, and it's worth uh, adding to what you said that the most damaging information that's come out so far about these investigators has been from the Obama-appointed inspector general. And the papers that the Justice Dep Department filed today are replete with Obama administration officials telling the FBI that they couldn't conduct things this way. They got, they got that admonition from Sally Yates, then the acting uh, attorney general, from Clapper, the, the DNI at the time, the national intelligence director, and even from John Brennan at CIA. So it, these papers, when you read them, this is not, um, you know, Bill Barr uh, plucking a bunch of political arguments out. Uh, these are, this is a well-supported argument with, with immense citation to a lot of supporting evidence that shows something we already know, which is that against protocol and under circumstances where they had no case, the FBI set up a perjury trap interview for Mike Flynn, discouraged him from getting counsel and from notifying the White House uh, authorities who should have been alerted if the FBI wanted to interview somebody on the White House staff. And one of the things that Barr doesn't get into today but is very alarming is the monkeying they did with the report of the interview of Flynn. And I think when you look at all the things that, that are brought together in the memo, you come away with the, exactly what the Justice Department said, which is they did not have a case. And the testimony of two agents, Peter Strzok and Joe Pienka, who is the case agent on the Trump-Russia case and would be 
impeachable on the basis of all the misrepresentations that were made to the FISA court. That's your case going into court. Unbelievable. So they just threatened his son and forced him to sign a confession. It's really scary. A Andy McCarthy, I appreciate it. Good to see you. I spent 32 years as a, uh, as a prosecutor and as a judge, and I believe in the system. Nothing has shaken my confidence more than this uh, particular case, the Michael Flynn case and the Mueller investigation. What you had here was a uh, Jim Comey, Cardinal Comey, they used to call him behind his back at the FBI, who was a hardened political operative who took advantage of the fact that it was a new administration, as you and Andy McCarthy have been saying, since uh, these uh, 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 FBI agents in uh, in denial of protocol, telling him he didn't need a lawyer, and the whole purpose was to frame him so that they could squeeze him to set up the president of the United States in order to change the course of American history. These are corrupt people in the DOJ and in the FBI at the upper echelons, clearly. And my concern is when you talk about texts that the FBI says they're missing of the lovers, uh, 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 Page and Strzok, uh, you know, where they. They say the White House wants to know everything that's going on. And then fast forward to the prosecution of Michael Flynn, where they, they misplaced 17,000 pages that were now being handed over to Michael Flynn's new lawyer. Guess who was in that law firm that uh, where the lawyers representing Michael Flynn in the case originally uh, work? Eric Holder. It is a swamp in Washington. You've got Eric yeah. Holder. You've got Mueller, who supposedly looked at this case. I mean, the guy's got to be non compass mentis at this point. And it clearly yeah. is an example of what goes on when they hate you, when they focus on you. So why did they hate Michael Flynn? I'll tell you why. He was named the director of national intelligence by Obama. And there was a hearing that, the, uh, that he testified uh, in front of Congress. And Obama has just gotten off, I killed bin Laden, and now al-Qaeda is on the run. And the truth is that when Michael Flynn got up and testified, he said, Michael, uh, uh, Obama, that uh, al-Qaeda is not on the run. In fact, they're in North Africa, and they've got training camps in the Middle East now. It was not long after that that he was fired. They also knew that he knew where all the bodies were and that he was going to streamline the intelligence community. And that's why when Donald Trump came in, Obama knew everything that was going on because he tried to deep six yeah. Flynn when he said to the incoming President Trump, you got to be wary of Kim Jong-un and a three-star general, Michael Flynn. This is deep state. The puzzle is complete. They hated the president and they used every opportunity they could to take him down and and by the way the memo as to who they should Mueller should investigate manafort and carter page and papadopoulos and yeah. flynn i mean you know carter page must be an angel but Destroyed they them indicted all. everyone that uh rosenstein put in the memo to Mueller. i mean this is so dirty you want to take a shower after you talk about it these it's are bad people and the FBI, uh, the you know, one, Christopher yeah. Ray's got to go. This was a deliberate, malevolent, concerted effort to destroy an honest man and thereby get to the president of the United States to destroy him. There's no doubt about it whatsoever. I would encourage people to read the actual documents themselves, the government's own reports, the agent's own notes. They're all attached as exhibits to the government's filing today and our filings in the last of oh, 10 days or so. It's important for people to see it for themselves, the actual evidence in the government's own handwriting and documents. What about Barack Obama knew? In other words, acting AG Sally Yates, she was actually shocked. This is when, remember, Susan Rice, on the day Donald Trump was inaugurated, went back in the White House to talk about this specific meeting. And in this meeting, Barack Obama said he knew all about this and you know, all the details of the call with General Flynn and his soon-to-be counterpart, which, interestingly, Rice and Samantha Powers admit they talked to their counterparts before they got into office, which would be a normal course of, of duty. But Sally Yates talking about all the people in the meeting, including Vice President Biden, including uh, Jim Comey and, and others that were there. Clapper and, the Powers, and Brennan. Clapper, Brennan are there. That Obama knew the details of the wiretap against General Flynn. Now, how, who would have told 
uh, Barack Obama, and I'd like to know what he knew and when he knew it. I want to know what Biden knew and when he knew it. Well, probably Susan Rice and also Peter Strzok, the FBI agent who was working for both Mr. Brennan and the CIA and the FBI on the, quote, counterintelligence investigation. We have to go back at least to August 15 of 2016 when Strzok and Page text each other about the insurance policy they discussed in McCabe's office. It's the very next day, August 16, 2016, before the election, that they open the file on General Flynn. And it's Look the day this. after Look. that that we, yeah. they slipped the agent into the presidential briefing in complete breach of trust that's exposed to exist there for a presidential briefing to spy on General Flynn because he is there with President Trump for that briefing. So Mary McCord, head of NSD, in her testimony uh, about suggesting the leak of Flynn came from the Obama White House. Uh, the Ignatius column, when the one, the infamous one that was put out, Mr. Schiff, so the president was informed General Flynn had talked with his soon-to-be counterpart. That's correct. So at least in theory, the leak of information could have come from the White House. At least in theory. Go further, if you would, uh, after you discuss it with Sally Yates, who we now know was surprised that Obama knew all of this. So when uh, we began... So at this point in time, the still President Obama was in the White House, and we were discussing, it wasn't until the incoming Vice President-elect, Pence, went on Face the Nation that we discussed advising the incoming uh, White House. Is this something that um, a president would know about, Sidney Powell? We, I think we just lost Sidney, unfortunately. The headline is, Adam Schiff's transcript show there was no evidence of collusion that any official could testify to more than 18 months into the investigation of, uh, of the FBI. And, and most importantly, here's just one anecdote that I think speaks volumes. The FBI opened up a case uh, called Operation Hurricane Crossfire on the allegation that somehow George Papadopoulos was colluding with the Russians. Andrew McCabe said they knew he didn't have any Russian contacts. That means they predicated a case against a man for which they had no evidence of contact with the Russians. That's how bad the FBI's conduct is. Greg, if you were to identify crimes committed by deep state actors, the 1% I always talk about, uh, off the top of your head, who would be on the list? It's a long list, Sean, uh, but the three people who were surely at the top of the investigative uh, microscope list would be James Comey, Andrew McCabe, and Peter Strzok. And I think there are three distinct areas that the U.S. Attorney John Durham and William Barr are looking at that would be lying to the FISA court, the Flynn case, to be sure, and the overall collusion investigation, how it was handled by the FBI and federal prosecutors. And, you know, I think we need to be reminded of what William Barr said. This was an investigation launched by the FBI without a legal basis and then later used to sabotage the Trump presidency. So the following uh, federal criminal statutes would be in play. Obstruction of justice, perjury, uh, fraud, a conspiracy to commit fraud, and deprivation of rights under color of law otherwise known as abuse of power. All right, Barr me... and Durham are very serious about holding people accountable because Barr said on our air, and I'm quoting here, if people broke the law and we can establish that with the evidence, they will be prosecuted. And I think that also includes, Sean, people in the Obama White House right, and administration, the intelligence community, John Brennan, and others. Let me get to Sarah. We're running out of time. You're all three coming back tomorrow. We're going to do a lot of reading between now and then. Sarah, your take, your takeaway. Well, look, this was a conspiracy not perpetrated just against the FISA court, but against the American people, Sean. And we know it now because we have all the transcripts and everyone in the United States can go and read these transcripts and see what happened here. It was clearly a fraud against the American people and a fraud against a duly elected president of these United States. And I agree with President Trump. This is seditious and it's treasonous and people need to be held accountable. You know, I was there as probably the number two target of that investigation. Investigation, and you saw it. I mean, literally during my closed door, supposed to be secret testimony, during it, during the bathroom breaks, presumably Adam Schiff is the guy leaking to CNN. I came out of, after nine and a half hours of straight testimony, I come out, I look at my Twitter feed, and from 10.30 a.m. 
CNN is reporting what's going on in the room, but not really what's going on in the room, not really what I said, sort of Adam Schiff's version uh, of what was said. Turns out none of those things were accurate. The big bombshells that they had where they finally got us, none of them end up being true, but that didn't stop them from running with it as though it was gospel for days. Some of those things they never even corrected. They just left it out there in the ether, even though it was totally false. So I'm really glad that I have you know, a guy like Rick Grinnell in intelligence now that forced Adam Schiff's hand. Adam Schiff didn't do this voluntarily. Adam Schiff did this because he was worried what the ODNI would do in releasing these things ahead of him. So it'll be interesting to see if Adam Schiff actually uh, releases it all because he's protecting someone. I, and I know oh, it I think me. he has. Yeah, because he knew that Grinnell would do it. And he also knew that, that Bill Barr was seeking the truth. And he also knew that he couldn't hold it back any longer. It's been a rough road for you and your entire family, starting with your dad. Uh, how many times did I hear you might be going to jail, Jared Kushner might be going to jail, uh, that your father was going to be impeached over this, and now we know that he knew it was a lie? A crime cannot be established here. They did not have a basis for a counterintelligence investigation against Flynn at that stage. I want to make sure uh, that we restore confidence in the system. There's only one standard of justice. Sean, you know what this is? This is Barack Obama's blue dress. That's what that is without the DNA on it. Let me explain what I mean. We're supposed to believe that during the Obama administration, the FBI went rogue, the Department of Justice went rogue, the CIA went rogue, the DNA, DNI went rogue, the NSC went rogue. We have all these leaks in the newspapers, the New York Times and the Washington Post, uh, that anybody can read and see. And Barack Obama didn't know anything. Poor Barack Obama, poor Joe Biden. The fact of the matter is they've never been asked. They've never been asked about any role they had, any knowledge they had. Those presidential briefing documents have never been made public. This is a massive cover-up of the greatest scandal in American history. We expect, and we don't like it, when the Russians interfere with our elections or the Chinese or the Iranians or the North Koreans. They're the enemy, and they ought to pay for it. But we don't expect the Obama administration and the Democrats to interfere with our election, to send spies into the opposition party's campaign, to lie to a federal court, to fix evidence, and to try and use the 25th Amendment to take a president of the United States out. That's why I've been calling this, all along, a silent coup. Here's, here's Obama's blue dress. Now, why is this important? Let me take a minute on this. This tells us that Obama knew. He knew. Obama started by saying he had learned of the information about Flynn and his conversation with Kislyak, the Russian ambassador, about sanctions. Obama specified he didn't want any additional information on the matter, but was seeking information on whether the White House should be treating Flynn any differently. So he doesn't want any information, but he does want information. And what does he mean? We should treat Flynn differently. It's been assumed he means don't give him intelligence information. I don't think it means that at all. I think it means take out Flynn. Now, why do I say that? Because uh, we have, as you know, this January 20th, 2017 memo, self-serving email from uh, uh, Susan Rice. 12.15, she writes it. For 15 minutes, the President of the United States has already been inaugurated. She runs to her office and writes this self-serving thing. First sentence, President Obama began the conversation by stressing, listen, his continued commitment to ensuring that every aspect of this issue is handled uh, by the intelligence groups by the book. Everybody's been focused on by the book. I'm focusing on his continued commitment. Well, you don't have a continued commitment if this is the first time you knew something on January 5th. The fact of the matter is Obama has known all about this. As a former chief of staff to an attorney general, I can tell you that you're not going to go to the FISA court going after a Trump surrogate without letting the president of the United States know. You're not going to send spies in the opposition campaign without giving the president a heads up. You're not going to mess around with a dossier like they did without the president of the United States knowing about the dossier. And the one man who's never questioned about this by any reporter at any time or any investigative organization is Barack Obama. And I would tell the president of the United States today, this is why they trash you and attack you in order to take attention off of Obama. Donald Trump deserves a huge apology a huge apology from the Obama administration and from the Democrats. He'll never get it. But why? 
He's the victim. He's the victim of the spying. He's the victim of, of them changing an email. He's the victim of what they did with the FISA court. You look at this document, Obama's blue dress, as I said. They impeached Donald Trump over a perfectly fine phone call transcript. Look at this. We have the members of the people who sat in on that meeting. We have Yates, the acting attorney general, is shocked. She doesn't even know what the hell Obama's talking about on a phone call. Mark, you want to know why? You... Because Obama was working with the FBI and the intelligence agencies. Today's DOJ announcement that it was dropping Mike Flynn's prosecution is fantastic news. It's long overdue. But where does General Flynn go to get the past three years back, or the millions of dollars he lost defending himself, or the pain and suffering it caused him and his family? Now, as happy as I am for Flynn, and I'm very happy, I am utterly disgusted that this could have ever happened to a decorated war vet, to any American, who just wanted to serve his government one more time as National Security Advisor. But what they did to Flynn is what you get for working for a government that the Democrats don't like. What they did to Flynn is merely part of a sick four-year continuum where Democrats and their never-Trump allies have abused their power in an effort to prevent the normal functioning of our government. That would benefit all of us, by the way. Now, they saw his victory, Trump's victory in 2016, as a sin for which Trump and his supporters must be punished. And their credo is rule or ruin. We will either rule the country or we'll ruin it. And oh boy, have they worked overtime to accomplish the latter. Now tonight we're naming names, members of an abuse of power hall of shame. These stories can't be read and they can't be understood really in isolation. For they were all evidence of a deeply undemocratic strain that has become a cancer on the Democrat Party, metastasizing throughout the entire body politic. Before the FBI's effort to entrap Flynn, the Obama intel chiefs, Brennan, Clapper, and the Obama DOJ and FBI, put in motion the Russian collusion investigation. They abused their power against low-level aides like George Papadopoulos. They abused their power in filing FISA applications to surveil Carter Page. And they abused their power in relying on a Russian dossier funded by the Clinton campaign, even when they could not verify its claims. FBI Director Comey abused his power in the entire Flynn saga as well. So did Acting Attorney General Sally Yates, who allowed an interview with the president's new NSA chief to go forward. And of course, there was the crooked FBI agent Peter Strzok and his insurance policy that he mentioned to his lovebird, Lisa Page. They went after Flynn on a pretext. They already knew that he'd spoken with the Russian ambassador because they had the call transcript. But they set up this interview in hopes that he would step into a perjury trap. When former FBI head of Intel Bill Priestap's notes ahead of the January 2017 Flynn meeting were revealed last week, they showed just that. This was the only justice that could have been handed down. Here now, a man okay. who was with Flynn from the campaign to transition and who sat face to face with Mueller, Rudy Giuliani, former New York City mayor. Rudy, today seemed to signify the real beginning of the unraveling of the deep state as we know it. Do you agree? I. I... I believe this is a very important day. First of all, justice has been done for a man who's been treated uh, a, a totally unjustifiable way. And this is a man that the Obama administration was out to get from the time that he wouldn't lie for them. And it, it has something to do with him, and it has something to do with the fact that they knew they were trying to frame Trump, and they didn't want Flynn in the way. They wanted Flynn out because they thought he was the only one that really would understand their tricks. There's a lot to what Comey was saying when he said he wouldn't have tried this on a more experienced administration. And they wanted Flynn out of the way because they knew they were going to carry out Strzok's insurance policy to remove illegally a sitting president of the United States. These people are terrible people. It's one of the worst things that's happened in our history. And they should be prosecuted for conspiracy. Uh, they Rudy, should not be allowed to get away with this. This is a very, very serious crime. The House Intel Committee crime. today 
Rudy, Rudy, new House Intel documents that were revealed, uh, they revealed something very interesting. Obama knew all the details of the wiretapped uh, Flynn, <laughs> the phone calls with Kislyak. Sure all right. He did. So this wasn't all that surprising. <laughs> this, w and, and by the way, remember when they, they, they said that he had to be kept in the loop? Remember that little memo? Uh, you know, yeah, from, yeah, from yeah, Peter I mean, Strzok? And yeah, all of that. <laughs> You're not surprised, are you? I'm not surprised. I, no, you know, I'm not. But the American uh, people Obama need probably, to know. Obama probably. Obama. I mean, Flynn outed Obama years before. I mean, three, four years before, when Obama wanted him to lie about ISIS. I mean, uh, Flynn could. Flynn and Flynn knew where the bodies were buried. So Flynn was a dangerous man, and it isn't just to get Trump. It's to facilitate their attempt to get Trump. They wanted Flynn out of the way. Uh, they had attempted it before. They started an investigation of him in 2017 on a ridiculous Foreign Agent Registration Act case. So this, 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 and they held on to the case. They held on to the case. They never really prosecuted it because they had achieved their objective by leaking it. But then, when Mueller yeah. came in, and then he had Weissman around that would prosecute, you know, a little baby or anything, if they had anything to do with Trump, they brought the case. That was probably the stupidest thing they did. They really had achieved their objective when they got him fired. But they were so now, darn Rudy, ethical, they how, had to go ahead and try to prosecute Hold on, him hold on. Here's how, here's how Adam Schiff responded, Rudy, to the DOJ's dropping the Flynn case. We lost 50 years worth of ground in solidifying the independence of the Justice Department after Watergate. It was back in the category of almost an emerging democracy where the rule of law is not yet firmly established, where prosecutorial decisions are made on the basis of politics. It, it all gets back to sort of the Rudy Giuliani truth is in truth, Kellyanne Conway, we're entitled to our own alternate facts, world that Donald Trump lives in. Rudy, since when has well, Adam Schiff been concerned about like the truth? <laughs> <laughs> I think Adam Schiff is part of the conspiracy to unseat a lawfully elected president. Uh, lying for two years misrepresenting that he had material evidence, which he didn't have. Uh, we take a good look. We take a good look at that whistleblower. It's going to take you right back to the beginning. You know that. Adam Schiff has been involved in this from the beginning. And some of them are easy. I mean, Comey and Strzok and Page and possibly Clapper and Brennan. But did it go as high as Obama? And can you get Schiff? Those are the two big questions. Uh, but I think Schiff has been a part well, of this almost from well, the beginning. Rudy, thank you so much. Great to see you tonight. <laughs> he's just a complete, he's a complete sleazebag. What happened here is one of the greatest political um, travesties in American history. And we don't have an indictment yet of any of the folks that were part of this conspiracy, both to thwart the election of President Trump and then to topple him once he's elected, hiding information from him, um, targeting his top lieutenants for, for false claims, putting unbelievable pressure on them with threats against family members. I mean, why is it that, that the whole lot of these folks, Rosenstein and McCabe and Weissman and, and uh, Comey, are, are not already under indictment? I mean, th th this is a conspiracy. It's 18 U.S.C. 241. They've each, as lawyers, breached uh, uh, numerous ethical obligations on the, on the, on the code of professional responsibility by lying to the courts, by submitting false evidence to the FISA court, by not handing over Brady material to, to, to Flynn staff. And yet none of them have had anything done to them. And they have ruined lives, destroyed. I yes. mean, we only mentioned a little sliver of the people whose lives have been ruined through Mueller investigation and, and what happened with the Papadopoulos and all, all the way up to today with, with General Flynn, what happened to him. And people That's just true. go on and they, they speak at colleges and universities, Saul, they get awards. And Kamala Harris says Bill Barr is the problem. Anybody, and, and A.G. Barr has made this clear, anybody who violated a criminal statute, if they have the evidence, they should be prosecuted. But let's take a look at what Jim Comey did just on the narrow issue of the Flynn investigation and, and in particular of the incredibly sleazy questioning of Flynn at the White House four days after he was installed as national security advisor that was all engineered by Jim Comey. It's one of the grossest abuses of power by an FBI director in history. How are you going to prove look, look, the conspiracy? 
Well, you got you got several things that they have done that violate uh, federal law and court rules. Uh, uh, submitting false evidence to the court, uh, bringing a false prosecution in order to get somebody to turn and lie against another another target of your investigation. Those are all criminal acts, um, uh, and and they're violations of due process as and therefore violation of constitutional rights. And that violates the statute against conspiracy for depriving people of constitutional rights. That's Section 241 of Title 18. Um, and, and each of them had ethical obligations as well. At the very least, they ought to be sanctioned um, by the courts in which they were appearing. For, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, Section 3.3, Section 3.8, Section 8.4 are all easily uh, demonstra demonstrably violated here. We've got Kevin yeah. Kleinsmith that, that it, it has all acknowledged right, go. that he altered evidence. Yeah, yeah. We got to go. We got to go, guys. But this is, I'm uh, with you on that, John. Yeah. Much of the media seem to be in perfect lockstep against Flynn. Look, and by the way, you're seeing it even today, Laura. It is remarkable, even though we have this incredibly substantive DOJ filing explaining exactly what was violated and why they withdrew their case against Michael Flynn. You have all of these commentators saying, well, you know what? He lied. He, he, he proved that he was guilty because he lied. He said he lied in his plea deal. You know, these are the same people that in any other circumstance would be saying, wow, all of those strong arm tactics that the DOJ uses to get people to plead guilty when they haven't done anything wrong, right? It's a complete double standard. They're closing their eyes to it, and they have done despite amazing evidence from the beginning of this. You know, Kim, I was thinking about what would happen, heaven forbid, if Joe Biden were to win in November, if indeed he's the nominee in November, but if he wins in November, this whole group is coming back. I mean, this, this entire uh, cast of characters or their alter egos are all going to be back in power. And they're not going to be checked by a, an aggressive media, except for us. They're not going to be checked. There's not going to be any check on them. I think people have to digest that for a moment, learn, given what we've learned about Flynn and Papadopoulos and everything that else that happened in Mueller and all the other nonsense with impeachment. This is the kind of person who will be running the Justice Department. It'll be retribution you, and, yeah. and, and, and uh, you know, payback time. You have just made to me the single biggest question mark in this election, the single thing that people should care about most. All right. I mean, what we learned from the last administration is that they had no problem. The, the arms of law enforcement, the prosecutors, the people charged with distributing equal and fair and blind justice in this country, of using and warping those tools to go after political opponents. And what we've seen, you know, we were talking earlier about the criticism of Bill Barr. One thing that's been forgotten here as well, and it's important, is that Bill Barr uh, may have ordered the review of this case. He may have agreed with the recommendation, but the guy who made the call was U.S. Attorney Jeff Jensen, who spent 10 years at the FBI and 10 years as a career prosecutor. They cannot claim he was engaged in politics in this. That's ludicrous, and they have no proof. So what Barr is attempting to do is restore that rule of law. And if that gets short-circuited by a Biden election and the return of this crew, I don't know how we come oh, back God. from that, if we establish that as a no. precedent and something that's allowed. Now, Kim, they're already talking about going after Flynn again. If Biden wins, they're already talking about going after uh, people like uh, you know Flynn and others who were working in the administration. I mean, they're going to try to go after Trump after the election if he loses. I mean, this this is what they're going to do. It's payback and and retribution. That's all it is. And you it, have done phenomenal reporting from the beginning, Kim. Thanks. Last word. Well, one thing I would also point out, too, is that this is almost a double foul. It's not just that the FBI should never have gone after Flynn, but I want to keep throwing out there, what the heck was Bob Mueller doing? You know, we now know he was in possession of all of this information, knew that the DOJ had declined to go after Flynn on crazy Logan Act charges, uh, knew the circumstances of this interview, and he did it anyway. And I think we need to be reviewing his probe as yeah. well, because this didn't end when the FBI handed it off to him, it was just an extension of what the FBI was doing. 
You got it. They, all of them conceded that they hadn't seen any evidence of this collusion, yet they kept going from the top on down. They kept going. Kim, phenomenal reporting on this. The Obama era DOJ, they, they were exposed. Kim just said it. I'm going to start with the General Flynn case. As soon as this case is dismissed, we will be pursuing uh, the Flynn investigation and try to explain how it got so off the rails, starting with offering General Flynn a chance to come to the committee and tell the country what it was like to go through this. I think Don Jr. made a good point. Who leaked uh, the classified interview to CNN in real time? I hope somebody will look at that, try to find out who leaked this classified information in real time. But this is very important. We now know from McCabe that without the dossier, there'd be no warrant against General Flynn. So one of my goals is to build on the Horowitz report. How soon, Senator? We need this like yesterday. Well, we got to have a coherent story here. We're dealing with pretty slippery characters. I'm not going to throw something against the wall. I'm interviewing the people who talk to the Russian subsource. I want to know what they say before I talk to McCabe and Conway. I'm going to do my homework.